Mark. Nita. Ryan. Matt. Nikki. Tony. Lindsay. Tay. Terry. Fred. You. Tony, welcome to the Mickey Mouse Club. Today's Hall of Fame Day, and you'll meet a girl who had a great idea on how to help the homeless. Plus, we'll have some slamming music from our MMC concert. And animal trainer Joel Slavin will be here to fill our studio with things that slither and crawl. Um, I think I'll be leaving now. Just tell me when he's coming. <laughs> Don't worry, Jen. I think they're pretty harmless. But creepy. All right, you guys. To get us started, here's a mom who really means business. Call me 10. Affirmative. OK. Some of you guys are veterans who've ridden in my carpool before. And some of you are rookies just starting junior high today. So this is a perfect time, perfect, to go over my rules. Rule number one, seat belts. Wear them or walk. Ted, how long is this going to go on? that O'Hara, and you, pal, just lost yourself a window seat. <laughs> All right, let's talk sunroof. <laughs> At no time are you permitted to exit the vehicle through that opening. In addition, I may add that you may not, I repeat, you may not stand up and wave as though you are a presidential candidate. Got that, Wilson? Yes, Miss Huntley, <laughs> sir. But there were some serious babes that I just <laughs> had to say hi to. Look, if you don't shape up, Wilson, I'm gonna bust you and you'll be riding in the kindergarten carpool. <laughs> now, one of my pet peeves is that... Bubble gum. <laughs> if any of this pink substance is found stuck to the bottom of your seat, you will be scrubbing this band with a toothbrush on Saturday. Wow, Dad. Your mom is so strict. That's nothing. Last year, Eddie left a piece of coconut custard pie in the ashtray. She had him transfer to military school. All right. <laughs> now that you're getting into the age group where the boys are noticing the girls and vice versa, here's how we're going to handle that one. There will be no hand-holding. There will be no eyelash batting. And there will be absolutely no hanky-panky none of any kind. None at all. That's a direct order. Excuse me, what's Hanky Panky? <laughs> All questions will be submitted in writing before time of departure. Now, I have the best on-time record at Woodcliffe Junior High of any mom. I intend to keep it that way. So if you're not out there when I'm ready to roll, it's Hasta La Vista, baby. Got it? Yes. <laughs> Good. OK. 0700 hours, let's roll. What's wrong, Mom? Your father took the keys to the van. Boy, is he in trouble. Oh, don't panic. Don't panic. Don't anybody panic. Do not panic. I've got a backup plan. A garbage truck? Yeah, yeah, that guy owes me a favor. All right, troops, let's move it, move it, move it, move it. Come on, boys, hang on the right. Girls, hang on the left. Come on, come on. Last person on the truck rides beside me. As all of you probably know, we have some new Musketeers. They're pretty great, aren't they? Well, today we'd like for you to get to know one of them a little bit better. So we went with Brittany back to her hometown in Louisiana. Check it out. Welcome to my hometown of Kentwood, Louisiana. It's a small, small town about an hour north of New Orleans. I feel the need for speed! All the kids in my neighborhood have go-karts. 
It's fun when we get to play chase, though. But you have to watch out for my mom's flower bed. Where I come from is country, and when I get back home, I start talking country again. Stuff like yonder and hey y'all, or what y'all doing, stuff like that. They call me Air Brittany. I love playing basketball with my friends. I could play basketball all night, but in the mornings, I have to help out at Granny's Deli. This is my great grandmother. Everybody calls her Granny, and you haven't tasted any seafood until you taste hers. People come from all around for her crawfish. Hey, gentlemen. I work the cash register and clean the tables and help the customers. These are going to be the best shrimp you've ever had. Thank you. This is how you unpeel a crawfish. Take the tail off. The head's the best part. It's really good. Then take the legs off and eat the crawfish. I eat like a horse. I eat so much. After the crawfish, I had a club sandwich, then I had a pizza, and then I had an ice cream sundae. I love ice cream. One, two, three, I probably four, started dancing five, when I was like seven, three years old. When you're dancing, you just can't do a step. You've got to get into it, you know? I really love living in Louisiana. The people here are so nice. They treat you like family and make you feel right at home. So, Lindsay, what do you know about reptiles? What do I need to know? Well, did you know there are about 6,000 species of reptiles? Uh, yeah, I knew that. Okay. <laughs> I knew that. What does this mean here, Terry? <laughs> well, our guest today can probably tell us something that we don't know. Let's welcome animal trainer Joel Slavin. <laughs> welcome, Joel. Thank you. How are you doing? We're talking about omelets or alligators. Well, first we're going to talk about <laughs> eggs, but this is not your average chicken egg. No, this it's is, not. This happens to be an egg from a North American alligator. Ooh. Female alligators in the springtime will lay about 30 of these in oh. a nest, and then 60 That's to 90 days later, you're going to get this little hatchling Ooh. alligator. Oh, now, I said, Lizzie's in panic mode right, right? now. <laughs> <laughs> Terry's going to have no circulation in her arm later. This is a yearling alligator, just about one year old. Mm -hmm. And these alligators in the wild will grow anywhere from 10 to 12 inches a year. And Lindsay, I'm going to ask wow. you to hold this little guy right now. Yeah, yeah, I want first. you guys to know, how come I'm always the one who gets conned well, into You're going to hold him for me just because... Lucky, okay, now put your other hand right up here. Oh, <laughs> There He's not going to go nuts, is he? There He's you moving. go, right there. And I'm going to show you an animal oh, here really... that oh, is about... Oh, 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 oh. <laughs> There's a big one. Whoa, whoa, whoa. About... <laughs> this guy here is about four years old. All Hello. Right? And this is a very important animal here in the state nuts. of Florida for yeah. several reasons. <laughs> one of the main reasons these animals are so important is because they dig holes. And in times of drought, those holes accumulate and hold water. Right. Now, in that water lives a little fish called a gambusio minnow. <laughs> <laughs> you got him? You hold on to it. And those gambusios minnows live strictly on mosquito larvae. And you know the problems Ew, we yeah. have with mosquitoes here in the state of Florida. So any animal that helps us with that problem is oh, very yeah. beneficial. Yeah. Nice. Now, I want to show you some very interesting... Wait a second, Joel. Uh... He has no tape on his mouth. Well, here. Lindsay, that's that's why I have you holding him for <laughs> me right now. That's why we're he's moving. Not tape. <laughs> now, I'm going to show you some interesting features, and I am going to ask you to stand back just a little bit, you okay. two, because okay. this is Let's dangerous. Bring Scooter now, with us. For you folks at home, <laughs> don't try this in your own home. Now, no, I'm going to tap him on the mouth. Do not try See? This. Okay. Now, if we can get a close-up right down the throat, folks, you'll that. notice that that kind of looks like a dead end. It's not at all. That's called an epiglottis valve. And what that valve does is it enables the alligator to take his prey under the water and dismember it, and it keeps the water Ew. from going down his throat and, and keeps him from drowning. Now, I'm going to okay, go prey, ahead... Prey as in what? Not, not prey like as in brown-headed girls, right? No, no, no. <laughs> prey as in, in ducks and other waterfowl and fish. 
Now, oh, now you two can come on back up Dang, here now because I'm going to hold his mouth shut. Okay, good. And I want to show you some other interesting features about the alligator. Yeah. First of all, you'll notice his eyes. They're retractable. Wow. Now, the reason that those eyes. are like that is because if he gets in a fight or a, a stick hits him in the eye, they can go right in and they pop back out without hurting him. Wow. Now, real quick, I'm also going to show you this is the alligator's ear right here. Oh, my he goodness. has flaps over those ears to enable him to do some deep water uh, diving. And then the ridges on the back and on the tail, those are called scoots. And, scoots. and they, the scoot. we now, him scoot. they, they absorb the heat while the alligator's basking in the sun in the daytime. And then at nighttime, when the temperatures drop, the alligator's body reserves to the heat that is accumulated in those scoots and helps keep him warm. And he has to do that because, just like all mm. reptiles, he's a cold blooded animal. Right. Yeah. And his t body so temperature. Those are like little natural solar panels. Exactly. Right? Solar scoots. Exactly. Now, you know. <laughs> About 200 years ago, the Seminole Indians discovered you could flip one of these guys over on his back and put That's him to when sleep. I my exit. Holy now I'm, I'm going to show you how this is done. Okay. And actually, rubbing their belly has nothing to do with it. That's just for show. And what happens here is very scientific. The alligator's brain is encased in a cavity, and that cavity is filled with a fluid. Now, when we turn him over like this, the fluid drains out, and the alligator's brain rests directly against the back of his skull, and it causes him to black out. You know what, now, Joel? That happens this, to my brain sometimes. This, this only lasts for about <laughs> two minutes, this. and you're going to see when I flip him back over. Oh, he's, oh, he's, oh, he's, oh, he's, oh, he's fine. All right, he's doing fine. He is. Now, okay. you know, the most common question that I get asked about these guys is what's the difference between an alligator and a crocodile? My partner, we'll Jesse, is coming in right now. Uh, look at that. And we'll look. show you both of these guys up close. And if you'll notice, the crocodile snout is kind of pointed and V-shaped, right. where the alligator's snout is blunt and U-shaped. Also, Ooh. if you'll look at on the side, you will see that the crocodile exposes about 90% of his teeth. Yeah, whilst... he looks like he needs braces. Back. Yeah. Yes, he does. <laughs> and the alligator only has about 10, maybe 20% of his teeth now, exposed. Now, you were showing us the like self-protective devices about their eyes, their ears. Right. And the, the crocodile has the same eyes and, and absolutely yeah, retractable like the eyes. Their snout and their That's correct. Right? Because does the crocodile have scoots? He sure does. Solar scoots? They have a lot of the same features because their environment is very similar. Right. However, the crocodile is a much more aggressive animal than the alligator. Now, Good thing he's way down there. Well, that's why we, <laughs> we've got me between you two and the <laughs> yeah, crocodile. That's always nice. Now, no we also, there. you know, we have another reptile that we're going to show you oh, today. Wait, I want to ask you a question. Okay. Now, why are uh, the, the crocodiles are an endangered species, right? And the alligators are not. That's correct, because the natural habitat is being destroyed from the crocodile faster than the alligator. The alligator is not as shy of an animal as the crocodile, and he's able to survive around people, oh, whereas see. the crocodile cannot. Oh, now, the, next, boy, look at the next reptile that I'm going to show you happens to be absolutely oh, my favorite absolutely. reptile in the world. Molly! <laughs> Okay, there we go. Oh my now, God! This Look is an, an alligator snapping turtle. No kidding. He's about 75 years old, and believe it or not, oh, only yeah. half grown. He weighs I'd about, be a, about 110 <laughs> pounds, and in the wild, he could get up to about over 200 pounds. This guy's 75 Look at years his old. Eyes. Now he has a very unique way of okay. feeding. He'll lay in the bottom of slow-moving riverbeds and streams with his mouth wide open. He has a little fleshy appendage in there that he can fill up with blood, and he wiggles it back and forth. Oh Fish gosh. see it. They go in to get what they think is a worm. Right. He shuts his mouth, and that's <gasps> look lunch. Look, 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 look. Oh, that is great. And he's now showing us his built-in yes. bait. This happens to be the largest type of freshwater turtle in the United States. He's very wow. cool. And, about, and he's about 75 this years old. <gasps> this is algae that grows on him from the sunlight and water. It's really not so gross. Not at As all. He has, has a very hard shell, just like almost all turtles. Hello. I and think one animal at a time is good enough for me. <laughs> we got him. Lindsay's still in, uh, arrested here with this little what? alligator. He's he really cute. Run. Can you guys see him? No. No. Oh. Maybe we can show. <laughs> maybe we can show. Do you hear the noise he's making? Well, now he's not oh, doing it. But the little noise he was too, making. He that's a distress call, and what he, he was scared and trying to call his oh, mom. His mom. But. He's not going to do that anymore for us. Mom, Terry. Oh, mom. <laughs> Anyways, that's North American alligator and North American alligator snapping turtle.
These are great. Listen, are great. this has been terrific. Thank Joel, you so thank much, Joel, for sharing your wonderful Thanks reptile pictures. Thanks for coming back. Always a pleasure. Joel Slater. When Anna Lee Burley was nine years old, she had an idea for a way to help the homeless in her community. She took that idea to a group of local volunteers who helped turn her idea into a reality. Anna Lee shows us that once again, kids can make a difference. I think that there's a misconception about homeless people, and there's a lot of homeless people out there who are just like you and I and just had some unfortunate circumstance happen in their life. Four years ago, Anna Lee Burley from Marin County, California, came up with the idea to create an organization called Adopt a Family. Her goal was to help homeless and impoverished children and their parents. Since then, solely through the donations and volunteering efforts of her community, over 175 families, including 350 children, have been provided with housing, childcare, food, and financial assistance. I believed in my idea so much that I brought it to a group of adults who were trying to get a homeless shelter built. After attending a few meetings, the idea of adopting a family became a reality. Through the dedication of Anna Lee and the hard work of community volunteers like Thelma Zuckerman, now director of the program, Adoptive Family has been able to help many people who have encountered tough times. I think Anna Lee came up with a beautiful idea about helping other children, helping people who aren't as lucky as they are. Adoptive Family, Claudia speaking. People in need of assistance contact the Adoptive Family office, staffed by community volunteers. As in Greg's case, they are often referred there by their local social service groups. I couldn't afford to pay my rent, my bills and stuff, you know. Um, I was in therapy and I had to have operation on my hand and I had nowhere to go. Adopt a family provided Greg and his family with financial aid, food and a place to live until he could get back on his feet. Another family, Dana and her two children were also having a tough time making ends meet. We woke up and we were in a nightmare. Everybody's calling you, they want money, they want money, they want money. You don't have money to give, it's hard. I can see that adoptive family has really helped these people and that it's not just all statistics and it makes me feel really good inside seeing them. Annalie's dedication to adopt the family continues to be part of her life. Whether it's organizing food drives or inspiring other kids by spreading the word about adoptive family at local schools. When I go into the classroom and speak to the kids, it gives me a real feeling of hope. If I could give kids out there advice, I'd say that um, to really believe in yourself and if you have an idea that it can really happen. They put out a whole lot of love and a whole lot of caring for everybody. It's not just for one kind, it's for, for all, all types of families. It doesn't matter who you are, they're here for you. I just want to say thank you for adopting a family. You saved me and you saved my life, my kids. Seeing the family this morning actually being helped out and the kids and all was a great feeling of accomplishment. And it was really exciting to be able to see that and think that it was my idea that helped them get to where they are today. Annalie has proven that a simple idea combined with hard work and dedication can truly make a difference in the lives of others. And you can help out yourself and maybe even the whole world when you know that you, your ideas, and your dreams can become a reality. All of us here from Mickey Mouse Club want to thank Anna Lee for her dedication in making her dream a reality by helping those less fortunate in her community. We're proud to induct her into the Mickey Mouse Club Hall of Fame. We show that there are other club members with great ideas to help people. I hope Anna Lee's story inspires them to take the next step and make a difference. Thanks, Anna Lee. And if you know someone who does something special, write to us at Hall of Fame, Mickey Mouse Club, Disney MGM Studios, P.O. Box 10200, Lake Buena Vista, Florida, 32830. Be sure to include your name, address, and telephone number. You ready for some music, TJ? You bet. Here's Justin, Brittany, and Dale from our MMC concert singing, I Feel For You. <laughs>
for you and let me, let me, let me, let me rock it, let me, let me rock it till I feel for you. Uh, I feel it for you. Because we like you. Mouse Club is videotaped before a live audience at the Disney MGM Studios in Lake Buena Vista, Florida. 